Hello, welcome to the Rich and Simple Living. My name's Maria. If you're new here, I mainly vlog about homeschooling, homesteading, that's urban homesteading, and home life, which normally incorporates cooking, doing things in my new air fryer, which I had for Christmas. So uh, it's still all trial and error at the moment. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be trying another recipe in my air fryer. Um, we're going to do an Eve's pudding, which is basically just like an apple base and a sponge on top. Well, it's new to me for the air fryer because I've never done sponge in the air fryer before. So I'm quite interested how it's going to turn out, especially with something like apple underneath, you know, something a bit juicy that might send it all mushy. I don't know. So it is new. What I'm going to do first then, I'm going to make the sponge mix for it. So I'm going to bring it down so you can see. You won't be able to see me unfortunately because uh, my kitchen's just not big enough. Um, one thing I have forgotten is my wooden spoon. I'll just have to pop and get my wooden spoon. Fortunately, the one I normally use has got a shorter angle, but um, handle, I should say. <laughs> but uh, I've been making minced beef pies this morning. I've used it and it's in the dishwasher, so we're going to have to use this one. Make do. <laughs> right then, so we're going to do the sponge. Like I say, I'm going to revert to my cookbook to have a look. And uh, first of all, well, it says first of all, grease the pudding dish, which I already have. <laughs> Then it tells you to put the apples and that in the dish, but we'll do that in a minute. We'll just do the sponge first. So we're going to cream the fat and the caster sugar together until it's pale. So we need three ounces of butter or block margarine and three ounces of sugar. It says caster sugar, but um, really caster sugar is just granulated sugar that's been beaten down, ground down to make fine sugar. So I've measured everything out earlier. And we'll do that now. So you can put a bit of this sugar, sprinkle a bit over your apples if you want. I'm not going to do that because um, I use cooking apples are from my own tree and I always cook with cooking apples because simply you don't need as much sugar. They're sweeter than cooking apples. I'm saying cooking apples. Eating apples. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I always cook with eating apples, I should say, because they're sweeter and you've no need to add the extra sugar like you do with cooking apples. That is what I'm trying to say. So I'm beating this. Normally, I put it into my food processor. I always call it my magic machine because I put them all in there and just do my sponges in there. But today I thought, oh, I can't be bothered to get it all out. Because my kitchen's so small, there's no room to keep anything to hand. So everything has to be packed away and then you have to get it out when you want to use it. So I think that'll do. Right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to add an egg. So it's one beaten egg. I've already beaten an egg. Again, the eggs are from my own chickens. I try to do things where I've grown my own things or, you know, like with the chickens, got my own eggs. Um, I try to do everything sort of home produced. Obviously, you can't do everything home produced, but where I can substitute things that are home produced, I will do because it's so much better and healthier. So we'll mix all that. So I've done Eve's pudding loads of times, but I've always done it in the oven. So I've got the oven recipe, uh, recipe the oven temperatures here. Uh, so we are going to do this in the air fryer. I've never done it in the air fryer before. I've never done sponge in the air fryer. Like I say, I only add it at Christmas, so I'm not sure, you know, of everything with it yet. And I'm going to hit disasters along the way, but if I do, you'll see them and we'll try and work out together what's gone wrong and help each other with it. So then we're going to fold in flour. So we need five ounces of self-raising flour. So we'll pop that in. 
do half first, we'll mix half and half at a time, make it a bit easier. I get everywhere covered in flour me. It doesn't matter how deep my bowl is, everything gets covered, it just puffs out. I think I just go at things too fast and too vigorous and next thing I'm covered in flour and all sorts. All right, do that bit. If it gets a bit thick, you can add some milk to it. Sort of give it a bit of a dropping consistency. We'll put that in there. They can all go in the dishwasher. Try and do it a bit slower this time. Still makes a difference. I'm still getting covered in flour. Mm. Mix this in. It look, seems a bit thick, so we may have to put milk to it. Do you know, normally my husband, he makes a drink and he leaves milk on the side, always. I spend all my life just putting milk back in the fridge. And... Uh, the one time I could do with a little bit, it's in the fridge. <laughs> Would you believe it? <laughs> so I'm going to nip to the fridge and get some milk because I can't see he's left any anywhere. First time ever. <laughs> the one time I wanted it. So I'll just nip and get some milk. Right, I just get the first milk I find, which is full fat milk. We have all kinds of milk in our house because we all have different. So we'll just get a little bit of full fat milk. We'll just drop a little bit in because we don't want it runny. Just a little bit. Just to loosen it up a little bit. Because it's quite thick. It's a bit like paste. There we are. That's doing the job as it works through. I don't want it too runny, but then I don't want it too thick either. I may just put a fraction more. It's just a bit of guesswork putting the milk in because the recipe just says a few drops. Well, it varies, doesn't it? It depends how your mix has turned out. You can follow the same recipe one day and then again the next day and the consistency could be different both days. I don't know why that is, but hey oh, it's just the way it goes sometimes, isn't it? Well, this is looking a lot better now. mix it all up that's ready to go on the apple so what we're going to do now is just put the apple into the bowl now don't be alarmed when you see the apple because I freeze my own apples but they go brown I mean look at that because once they defrost they go brown it's nothing to worry about they're perfectly safe to eat a lot of people see brown apples and think oh they're off throw them away but no, not when, um, not when you know it's relatively fresh. You wouldn't uh, worry about that. So this is perfectly fine. It'll come out all right. Well, <laughs> providing it cooks all right, it'll come out all right. But as far as the apple goes, it'll be all right. So don't be alarmed if you've got brown apples. And like I say, these are eating apples, not like... I said cooking apples, they're eating apples. <laughs> I'm always muddling up what I'm saying. Sometimes I look back at videos and I think, what on earth am I talking about? <laughs> I've said the total wrong thing. So, like I say, I'm not going to put no sugar on them because they are eating apples and they'll be sweet enough. And there's sugar in the um, mix anyway. So there's no need to put any more on. We'll get another spoon just to level all this off in a minute because it's sticking to the wooden spoon. I quite like metal spoons for doing things really. I think maybe because you can get things off them easier. Um, try and get as much of it as we can, although it should rise if it cooks okay, it should. What we'll do, we'll get a metal spoon just to and you did have one, didn't I? So again, another one out the drawer. Just put one down. There we are, look. Comes off easy, doesn't it, when you scrape it with a metal spoon. So we'll just take that over the apple, cover the apple with it. Hopefully we should have enough mix. And that's just a nice consistency, really. It's stiffish, but not too stiff because you don't want it too runny otherwise it's just 
going to be a mess between the apples. This is quite nice. There. It should rise. I think not too much. <laughs> like I said, I've never done it in the air fry before, so I don't know what to expect from it. Right then, put that there. Put them in there, we'll sort all them out in a minute. So that's how it's looking. We'll go and we'll put it into the air fryer now and we'll see what happens. Right, we've got the air fryer out. So we're going to pop it into the pan. Put it into there. Put it in. Can you see that okay? Let's just make sure it's in the middle. Okay. Now we're going to cook it at 140. Um, let me just check my conversion to make sure I've got that right. Um, yeah, 140 for 36 minutes. Okay, so I'm not sure whether to put it on bake or air fry really, but I think we'll pop it on air fry and we'll see. And off we go. Do you know, why has that changed? I think, turn it off a minute. That seems to have changed itself. See, we do have disasters. We are going to have to alter that. I don't know why it's changed itself. See if it switches itself off. It says off, but the fan's still going. There we go. Let's try that again. So what did I say? 140 for 36 minutes. So we are going to air fry. I might have pressed it the wrong way around before. 36 minutes. And off we go. So we'll come back to it in 36 minutes and we'll see if it's worked out. Right, it's just bing ding, whatever it does. Um, we'll see if it's ready and see what this sponge is like. I'll swing you around so you can um, see. Bring it right down a bit because I want to bring it out onto this towel. Got a knife ready to test it. Unless, of course, it looks runny, then I won't need to. So, here we go. This is always the bit that makes me think, will it, won't it? Oh, it's not too bad. Definitely doesn't look runny. Sponge has cracked a little, but that's nothing. Right. Let's bring you up so you can see what the top looks like. I'll just lift it out. move this back in then. Certainly looks like it's cooked anyway. Pop that back in there. Let's just bring this forward. Right, look at that. That looks really nice. Certainly feels good on top. Shall we just pop Right, I'm going to put a little bit onto a bowl. Um, let me tell so I can hold it because it's still quite warm. Bring me down a little bit. And we'll take a little bit out of it. We'll take a bit from this end here. I don't want to 
take too much at the minute. Um, put that on there. Try and get to the apple a little bit if we can. And there we go, there's the apple. So as you can see, we've got the lovely sponge set beautifully and the apple underneath. We'll have a bit of a taste test. It's going to be a little bit warm. I normally I'd eat this with custard. In fact, Eve's pudding's beautiful with custard. I like apples with custard. Apple's one of my favourites. Mmm. That's divine. Oh, that sponge is lovely. Soft in the middle. A little bit of a crusty top so you've got a little bit of a crunch but not that burnt kind of a crunch it tastes a bit of apple mm. Mm. oh that is lovely that is really nice I'm compiling some of my favorite recipes things that have worked out well things that I like the taste of <laughs> but I'm going to pick out favourite ones and at the end of the year I'm going to do a rundown of some of the favourite ones and you know what this is going to be in there with them one of my favourites that's lovely I made apple crumble and if you want to have a look at that that's um, down in my air fryer recipes I did an apple crumb that was beautiful that was out of this world and cooked really well in here and I've got to say the Eve's pudding has done the same I was a little bit unsure what would happen with the sponge but that sponge is lovely so all that remains now is to try a sponge cake so in the coming weeks maybe we will try a sponge cake and see what happens with that but this eve's pudding with its sponge and its apple is beautiful lovely go lovely with custard in fact after tea i'll be having some so that's it for this week i'll drop the recipe down below in the description box i think i forgot to do it with the last week's recipe but what i'll do also because somebody had asked me one of my recipes um, to convert it for the oven um, temperatures so I'll put the oven the gas marks and oven temperatures in as well as the air fryer ones so if you want to make it for and put it in the oven you'll be able to if you haven't got an air fryer and the recipes don't alter for the air fryer or the oven I simply get one of my cooking books have a look what I like cooking what I want to cook pick it do it and then just convert it into the air fryer converters. Somebody had asked me where I get a conversion table from. Do you know, I Googled it and found it on Google and there was lots of them and they all come out the same. So I can be safely assured that it will be accurate. And that's all I do. That's just what I do. So it's just a case of whether everything works out. I'm sure I'll come across something that won't, but um, same with everything, isn't it? So there you go for this week. Um, I didn't do a homeschool video this week. I've had a bit of an hectic week and all sorts of things going on and going wrong and oh dear. But next week now, hopefully Tuesday, we'll be back with a homeschool video. And I've got another question that wants answering to do with GCSEs. So I'm going to talk about that next Tuesday. And then Friday next week, we'll come back with another air fryer recipe. Unless anything exciting happens in between and we just flick the camera on <laughs> and you might get extra. But yeah, that's what we're planning. So for now, have a good bank holiday weekend if you're in the UK. Um, as everybody everywhere must know, it is the weekend of the coronation. So we've got a long weekend. So whatever you're doing, have a good time and stay safe. See you next week. Bye.